Hi, I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're Enchantarium. In today's video, we'll be making Mori, a smart doll custom to commemorate the good times we had with Unus Anus. We'll start with a bit of unboxing. At the beginning of October, we ordered a pair of Cortex sets, the hard plastic version of Smart Doll that you need to put together yourself. We have the shells in cinnamon and the frames in milk, because they didn't have the matching colors in stock at the time, several heads as they were on buy one get one free deal, and extra accessories for my vinyl girl, Jeannie. We decided it would be fun to put together a Cortex set together with you guys, and that it would be funny if Alex fed me the instructions keep talking and nobody explodes style, meaning I don't see the instructions and Alex doesn't see what I do. Here's how it went. Zaczynamy. Ah, zaczynamy. Już tak jakby z tym udem w środku. Na zewnątrz. To się zdecyduj! Weszło, proste to było. I to jest prostsze niż myślałam. Nie patrz! Nie patrz! Nie patrz! I to mogę odłożyć? Tak. Załóż mi kręgosłup na to, co mamy teraz. Wsadzasz na ten i weź sobie lalkę, która ma te kulki i wsadź ten spine na górę. Tam powinien być taki widzel wystający. Czy ja ten spine mam wsadzić na te nogi? Tak. Dzięki. No przecież tak mówię od początku. Czyli to mogę odłożyć? Tak. A! <śmiech> o! Dobra, udało mi się chyba. Teraz. O! Dobra, chyba teraz to weszło do mnie. Nie! Mm. No dalej. Jakieś szczypce mi daj. Kto to wymyślił? Marek tak robił. I to źle robił. Mogę spróbować. Daj. I ten młotek. To jest takie proste. Myślałam, że trudniej. No. To może po prostu coś jest nie tak. Z nami. Trwało to pół a, godziny przynajmniej. A, a dobra, ale let's move on. Witam. Pamiętasz, jak powiedzieliśmy, że wezmę zakawkę papieru, żeby odkładać patyczki, żeby się nie przykleiły do stołu? Nie no zaraz. 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 Nie Nie zaraz. Czyli to musi być po przeciwnej stronie niż joint ten ramienny ma ten dzyndzel. Nie słuchałam Cię wcale. Syk, widziałaś to? Nie. Replay. Magic, nie mam pojęcia jak to zrobiłam. Czekaj chwilę, nie kręcę tego jeszcze. Bo co? Bo ten cały nie kręcę. A jak kręcę mnie? Co się nawet? No! Tu ma ulicy. smash. Nie będzie widać na Także nie wiem, się żegnamy. Elo! For starters, I really wanted to make the jacket pattern from Danny Chu's free pattern library, and I wanted to, again, 
put a color block spin to it, because that's just what I do, and it was the perfect solution for an Unus Honest tribute, as that meant I could make only one doll instead of two. If you're looking for a tutorial on how to put it together, I'll link Sam Sally's video in the description, as my attempt wasn't the greatest and I'm not even sure I still want to include this blazer in this project. I used some interfacing that made the collar super stiff and lumpy and it doesn't look good, even though the rest of the blazer really is good, if I do say so myself. Truth is, I should have made a muslin first to test the pattern out. But as the footage cycles through, I wanted to tell you of how this project came together. You may or may not know of a channel called Unus Anus. It was a joint YouTube channel created by Crank Game Place and Markiplier. They did a variety of activities on the channel, from making cheese to eating fire, uploading one episode per day. Ethan represented the Unus, while Mark represented the Anus persona. And if you don't know this channel, then you may be wondering why I'm using the past tense for all of this, and the reason is that at the end of the Unus Anus, which means one year, they deleted all of the content from YouTube. It's all gone, and all we have is memories. Their motto was Memento Mori, remember death. Morbid, I know, but the whole experience was very interesting. You can still find clips and compilations on YouTube, my favorite being this one. But any re-uploads have been taken down, so unfortunately you'll not be able to get the whole experience anymore. Kinda like in life, you know? Moving on to the pattern that turned out well, and one that I can share with you, cause I made it. This is a simple top with a funky neckline. It's actually a bodice for a dress that I'm working on, but I thought it perfect to break up a suit instead of making a blouse with a collar. The cotton is pre-washed to avoid any staining. I'm cutting out the whole set twice, once in black and once in white, so I stacked my fabric accordingly. I'm transferring the darts to all of the front side pieces and sewing them in, making sure that two pieces of the same color mirror each other, as one will be lining and has to be reversed. Next, I'm adding the front center that for obvious reasons was cut in half, plus seam allowance, to be joined with a black side later. We're sewing a straight edge to a curve here, so take your time to pin it well. I'm using pinking shears for the first time to trim down the seam allowance and pressing it towards the side seam. Next, I'm sewing in the back side to the front piece and then the back center to that. This is one of the white segments, you should have two white and two black in total. Now I'll join them down the center front seam, right sides together. Those can now also be joined, right sides together, along all the edges, leaving a small gap to turn the top right sides out. I haven't mentioned this so far, but I am changing my thread color to match the segments I'm working on every time, otherwise it might look strange. After trimming the seam allowance for the last time, I turned the top to the other side and pressed. I simply top stitched the opening in place as it will be in the back and nobody will see it. I added snaps in the back and the top is done. I started by sanding all the imperfections that could be visible, especially those on the jaw. Before painting, I sprayed the surface with Mr. Super Clear to have a nice, paper-like texture and to protect the plastic. I'm starting with a light grey watercolor pencil to make the initial sketch. This is my first take on making the school makeup. I've never tried it on myself or other dolls, so I was a bit nervous but also excited to try something new. I look at a lot of inspirations like pictures of human schools, Halloween makeup or digital drawings of creepy characters. I think it would be a bit easier to do on more realistic kind of face, but I did everything I could to make it look good on the anime face shape. I'm using watercolor pencils and chalk pastels for the face. I think I put on 5 or 6 layers of pastels for all the shading and 3 layers of watercolor pencils to build this black color. Then I'm adding white pencil for highlights and more detail, and finishing the whole look with three layers of Perlex powders. 
Her hair will be black and white, what a surprise! First I'm making the wig cap. I watched some tutorials on how to make it from Mozekito and Hextian, I leave links to their videos in the description. After it's done, I trim it and it looked like this. I had some leftover yarn wefts from making other dolls, white from making Fenris and black from making bone clay. I'm gluing the wefts with white glue starting from the bottom of the head. I'm leaving a bit of space between what I already have and the part and placing the black parting weft in the opposite direction. When it's dry I can easily flip it to the right side. The same goes for the white hair. When the glue on the white weft is dry, I have a nice glueless parting. There is one small gap, but besides that, I'm pretty happy how the parting turned out. I cut the length and then worked around the face. I didn't plan to make it super short, but you know how it is, you go to the hairdresser, ask for a little trim and suddenly half of your hair is gone. Yeah, I'm one of those bad hairdressers. I wanted to have a Genesis cut, but it turned out to be a Todoroki hairstyle. The angry teenager anime hairstyle doesn't really work with the suit. We considered some of the other wigs we have in our stock, but after a few hours of artistic breakdown, we decided to make a new wig. We didn't have time for a new wig cap, so bye bye emo anime hair. This time I'm going to use nylon hair, black for the bottom part and silver on the top of the head. I glued the black wefts with hot glue and then added silver with white glue. The part was a bit tricky. I cut the wig cap in the middle and glued the hair inside. It's difficult to do with synthetic fibers and I'm not good at wig making so I spent a whole day doing this, but I think it looks better than the previous hairstyle. I think in doll making the hair should complement the face, work well with the outfit and enhance the design and ideas. The anime wig didn't do that well, but this wig brings the face and the clothes together much better. From the same black and white satin I used for the jacket, I'm gonna make some nice trousers. I'm using a pattern by Kitten Cat and cutting out all of my pieces with a rotary cutter. I used Fray Check on all of the pieces to avoid having to worry about finishing the edges with my machine. I transfer my darts onto the pieces and pin them in place. I'm trying to do as much of the black side stuff as I can, so I don't have to switch out the threads in my machine too often. In one go, I will sew the darts and the waist lining pieces. After pressing darts, I will put in the pockets. You put the pocket on top of the pants and stitch along the pocket line. Then I can open this flat and top stitch the seam allowance towards the pocket. I'm doing it that way so I don't have any seam lice in the front of the pants for a cleaner look. After that is pressed, I can fold the pocket in half to find that missing side seam part. After you do it once or twice, it's very easy to make these kinds of pockets. You can now stitch the pocket together so it actually works like a pocket. We can now join the pieces at the side seam. To hem these, I'm using a double-sided iron-on tape. I press it on the wrong side with the paper on and then peel the paper, fold the edge over and press again. It gives a neat hem with no stitch lines. After repeating this whole process for the white pant leg, I can join them together along the center front. Before I close the back, I'm gonna add the waist lining right sides together. I do this a bit differently from what the pattern instructs. I will sew along the top edge, but I will sew down the sides as well. One at 7mm from the edge of the lining and the other as close as I can to the edge. I will trim the corners for better turning and the side I sewn at that 7mm I will trim the seam allowance of as well. 
I put fray check on the new cut and turned it over. If you want, you can stitch the seam allowance to the lining, but since we sewn the corners, it might be tricky. If your lining is standing out, you can tack it down to the seam allowance on the inside. Now I can sew the back center seam and stitch the legs. I'm making sure that where the collars meet at the crotch, they are aligned neatly. My hemming wasn't great, so I had to redo a little bit of that iron-on tape, but it peeled off with enough force. I sewn the legs from the crotch down, changing the thread where needed. I pressed the pants to get the crease in the front and added a snap in the back. The way you sewn in the waistband will dictate which side overlaps which, you will see which one lays flatter. I really, really tried to make shoes for Mori myself, and I had some success in this method, but I wasn't able to successfully recreate it every time. I'd like to make a comprehensive BJD shoe tutorial, but I think I have to have a better understanding of how it goes together myself first. Hopefully, I'll be able to show you how to make good fabric shoes in our next Smart Doll video. To make the shoe black, I just paint it with a few coats of black acrylic paint and hope it won't crack. To avoid staining or scratching, I covered it with four layers of matte acrylic varnish. I had a few ideas for the eyes, but it turned out that the best option is doing the irises digitally. I designed one dark and one light eye and printed it on white paper. I added a few details with paint because the print had low quality. I asked Barb to put them in glass cabochons since she's done it in the past. I think she varnished it first and then glued them on using a book binding glue. This is how she turned out. I thought doing a black and white Cruella de Vil style of a character would be easy, but it turned out that the split in the middle concept was very tricky to make feel complete. Working with two colors makes detailing difficult and finding texture to make it look more complete was pretty hard. Did you watch Una's Anne's like Barb? Or did you miss it all, like me? Do you miss them or do you wonder what you missed? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. Like Unis Anis. Hey, ja jestem Basia. A ja Ola. I jesteśmy Enchanterium.